I think every saxophone player in the world wants to get better at creating emotion in their playing. We all do, right? The emotion is the thing that connects us. And when we listen to other players, that's the thing that that we get really engaged with. It's that connection, it's that feeling that we have when we listen to a saxophone player. But how do we create that emotion in our own playing? <laughs> Man, I've been busy this week. I've been filming loads of new lessons for sax school and for my blues mastery course. Check this out, Clarence Clemens sound formula. Wow, that's pretty cool. And I love this one too. I've been working on an Arnett Cobb solo and making a series of lessons about that. Really, really cool. But you know, this question about getting emotion in your playing, it's such an important question that not enough of us really dig into and find a solution that actually helps. <laughs> So each month in sax school, I film a session with a celebrity saxophone player, a, a real legend. And these are great because we get to dig deep into the sort of things that made them such an amazing player. Technique, practice, practice approach. And then recently I filmed one with an amazing UK based saxophone player called Snake Davis. Now Snake's a bit of a legend in, in the UK saxophone pop world because he's recorded on hundreds and hundreds of million selling records. In fact, he's the guy that recorded the Million Love Songs solo with Take That. He's also recorded with Eurythmics, Pet Shop Boys, Lisa Stansfield. He's a guy that's done just about everything. And as a solo artist, he's, he's really successful as well. And he's great at connecting with his audience and his playing. So I invited Snake over to the studio to share with us what it was that he did to create that emotion, to nurture that emotion in his playing. Now Snake shared a whole bunch of amazing stuff in this session, but one of the things I thought was brilliant was when he was talking about where he gets his inspiration from. And it wasn't just from other saxophone players. Check this out. Well, to me the most important and useful and practical way to get emotion and feeling and expression into playing is to relate it to, to singing. You know, at this point we're starting to, that, that your viewers will be thinking, oh, he's not going to make us sing, is he, you know, and they're all turning off. It's so close. I mean, this thing is, I'm sure you and I would, would maintain, and a lot of people would agree with us, that it's the closest thing to the human voice out, out of all those instruments. You know, cello's kind of quite, cello's quite close as well. You know, in the introduction we talked about my career, and after my voice broke, when I was a little boy soprano, I wasn't such a good singer. I'm singing more now. But um, I think I've refound my singing voice through this thing. That's interesting. Yeah, so that's interesting. And a lot of those <laughs> a lot of those things that you that you loved about singing are transferable, right? And it all, all ties in with what we're talking about, this whole thing of connection. Yeah. So what would be the process then? So let's say you um, trying to capture the emotion from let's say for a, a singing something that you've heard that you want to transfer mm -hmm. on your saxophone. Mm -hmm. What's the process that you would go through? Or could you break that down? And yeah. Just maybe describe some of the elements that, that you do identify in that vocal phrase that help to bring the emotion out in the saxophone playing. You know, tying in with this a lot, you'll get a student coming to you and they'll say, well, you know, I've learned to play Georgia, but um, you know, I learned it from this bit of sheet music. And it doesn't really sound all that good. You know. Okay, first of all, write the lyrics in. Right, and if you're brave enough, Sing it, you know, Georgia. And while you're singing it, you know, press the right keys, but don't have the saxophone in your mouth. Sing it. That's a great. Uh, that's a great point, actually, of putting the lyrics in, mm. uh, because and I'm guessing the reason that you ask people to do that is because all of a sudden, it people you, you start to connect with the melody because exactly. there's meaning in the words. Exactly. Yeah. The lyrics that have have a meaning, of course, <clears throat> and the more meaningful the lyric, the more benefit you can get from that meaning, of course. So, um, some, some lyrics are a little bit flippant <coughs> and they're not so quite so useful in, in that way. But, uh, and then I'll encourage people to learn a song that way. You know, don't go out and buy the music or download the sheet music. Listen to Rita singing it or Smokey Robinson singing it. Put the headphones on. Um, you know, so if you haven't done this before, it may take a while. You may have to get somebody like myself or you to tell them what the first note is. Uh, <coughs> and it can be infuriating, take ages, but it's so valuable to, to, <coughs> to learn a tune directly from a great singer. You can't help but copy their phrases there. You know, nobody goes, Georgia. They go, Georgia. You know, a bit of vim and a little bit of bend. And... Um, you know, straight away, that's, 
the singer becomes your teacher. Now I love that bit, the singer becomes your teacher. How cool is that? What singer would be your teacher? Would it be Smokey Robinson or Aretha Franklin like Snake Davis was talking about? Let me know in a comment below. I'll be interested to know. And you know, in the, as we went on through this session, Snake shared a bunch of really great techniques about how you can take that inspiration from a singer and break it down and then apply it to your saxophone. Really, really cool. He also talked about lots of things to do with his career, going out and, and playing, um, doing pop sessions, what a pop session was like, um, and also some other skills that help you to develop and prepare yourself for that sort of role of going out and being a superstar pop sax player. Hey, if you want to check out the full guest session that I recorded with Snake Davis and it's jam-packed with so much great information. You can access it inside the SAC School members area along with over 650 lessons, our student pathways which are a fantastic way to learn in a really systematic pragmatic way. It really helps you to make massive progress and dozens of mini courses and loads of resources, our master classes, tons of stuff and other guest sessions with other amazing artists as well. That's all inside Sax School over at mcgillmusic.com. Hey, don't forget to put your comments below of what singer inspires you to play saxophone and maybe a challenge for you this week would be to go and find a singer and see if you can take some inspiration and apply that to your saxophone practice. Keep practicing hard and catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.